What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore Survival Episode 3 Straight into the building of my first very simple mob farm type dongle uh, It's not really a mob farm because all it's going to do is spawn the odd mob on the singular tile Which is at the bottom of the centre once it's darkened so if you press F7, you can see where you get your light spots. Yellow is uh, light in the day, dark at night, and red is permanently dark. You want it red because you want to have mobs spawning all the time. As we continue with this very basic version one, please don't forget to subscribe and like if you like. It helps the channel and me out a lot. So we have a lot of resources, or at least at this stage in the game, we have a good amount of resources, I would say. I'm happy with what I have. The resources that we'll need later on, like redstone, gold, copper, iron, that sort of stuff, will have to come through doing the sieving. Um, we, of course, are already on day 18, and we have a decent stack of ingots, which isn't no small feat, of course. What you haven't seen is that was a lot of of sieving and smashing with hammers making sure to keep up with the gravel uh, smashing because that's where you get your diamonds from on a very rare occurrence but to be honest without a diamond hammer and or wand it was painful you can use the stone and i did at the start but i think the stone only does nine nine blocks at a time which isn't really much of a uh, wand in my opinion so I did put half blocks on the top, which means that nothing will spawn up there. Nothing spawns on a half block. And as you can see, a half block in a hole here, it makes a hole that you can reach through and hit the mobs, but it's pitch black so that they can still spawn. However, that level is a bit risky because that means that the skeletons uh, can shoot through there as well. Now we are nowhere near indestructible. And allowing them to shoot me when they like from the mob farm is a bit daft. But it shouldn't happen too often. And I'm hoping that if the mob farm works, reasonably decent anyway, that I'm able to um, keep on top of the, the spawns in there. But we shall see. Now, one thing I have noticed is you, you'll probably notice throughout the series and certainly throughout the episodes, there is a switch between if you see the the menu anyway sometimes i'm in the server mode where i create a land game sometimes i'm not the reason i do that is for the ability to do other things and wait so i'm not sure who knows this and if you do apologies but if you don't this should help you out when you're in single player and you just play normally offline if you pause the game or if you leave the game alt tab out to do something else it pauses if you open lan and create, turn it into a network game. Obviously, you don't need to have anything specific. It works regardless. Creates you a network port. You don't have to connect to it. It just continues to play as normal for you. It does mean people can join, but only if you give them all the information, which you're not going to do. Anyway, if you pause or alt-tab out, the game continues. So if you're afk in and you want to go and play another game or work on another video or do something else, what I do is use that functionality. And that is why you'll probably see... The server sometimes on, sometimes off. The only thing you've got to be careful of, and I didn't realise in the season before, is if your server is turned on, you can use the teleport functions on the map for the J button. Uh, of course, that is not allowed, and I will not be using that. Now, back on to more interesting stuff. This is our first storage setup. Draws, draws, and more draws. Now, realistically, even though it's an expert pack per se, the drawers aren't too difficult to make as long as you have plenty of wood. So you need wooden planks, uh, wooden slabs I think it is, also chests, a lot of chests, four chests per one of these. And again, that's just wood, right? You can make chests with the logs as well, so if you do logs around in a circle to make the eight circle that you would for a, a chest, it would make four chests. No more efficient, just quicker. So actually, that was a silly thing to say, that's, that is more efficient. Um, now, just pay attention to how I've built that. The corners that I've made and around the sides, the they're not technically attached. 
So if when I get my draw controller, that won't work, but we'll get to that later on. You need to fill those corners in. They have to touch a solid face in order to count as connected. Now, the idea of storage for me in this series is going to be drawers. Up until the point, I can go to refined storage. AE2, or Applied Energistics 2, is in this pack properly with the expert, the expert recipes. I will do that for the quests, but it's very unlikely I will use it unless the community, if I get one, is wanting me to do so. Else, I'm going to use refined storage. Now, the refined storage recipes are not expert. They are standard because I've added it after the fact. But refined storage is, in my opinion, much better than applied energy sticks for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the whole storage facility. Obviously, anybody that knows Applied Energy Sticks has played it, where you have to have multiple channels for multiple cables and a, a channel up to eight ch um, per cable. So you can only have eight channels on a cable. And then you can have the dense cables that have, I think it's 16. So although it is quite fun to play, where you have to concentrate on making sure you don't run out of channels and you have to have multiple different coloured network cables going around to know where you're doing and what you're doing and what you're about, uh, putting on that you don't have that problem with refined logistics as long as it's connected everything is connected there's no channel at all other than the just one channel that everything works on secondly the actual items if you have a stack of items 64 gold i can see on the screen now of course you know that stacks to 64 and then two stacks is 128 the sword that you can see on the screen as well stacks to one and it doesn't ever stack above that. Now with applied energy sticks, it works on twofold. There is a count and a type. So the count is how many items you can have in the stack, which would be 64 for gold and one for a sword. And the type is what type of item it is. Now the reason applied energy sticks is a bit crap for this is because a sword is a perfect example, especially if you've got a mob farm. Every time you put a sword into an applied energy sticks storage, it counts as one type and one item and they do not stack. So then it uses up another type. So three swords in applied energy sticks is three types, which is three times 64 wasted. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and in applied energy sticks, it means that if you have 64 swords in storage that is 64 types which you could have gold of 64 types but obviously times 64 so i'm hoping that makes sense if not just let me know in the comments i can do a better explanation but the idea is that every sword you put into storage on applied energy sticks count it wastes a stack of 64 for something else now in refined storage a sword is one a gold ingot is one 64 gold ingots is 64 and 64 swords is 64 it doesn't do the stacks per se it just counts the items it doesn't care about types just the items so you can have 10,000 swords or 10,000 ingots it makes no difference and that is huge, especially if you go into crazy mob farms. I expect if we get there and I don't die, the way I play this game is I want more of everything than I ever need. So I want millions of iron, millions of gold. Usually as soon as I can get to mining, where I can use the miners, probably from... Uh, what's it called? RF Tools. The world builder thing that you can have also turns into a quarry. And as soon as I get that, I love using that to eat the world. I also like turning on the one where it actually makes the holes so you can see what it's doing as opposed to just replacing things for dirt. Now, of course, if your computer isn't powerful enough, then that is the standard option and do it. All it does is mines everything and replaces it for dirt so you don't get lag. But I eat the world and usually... I go to the Twilight Forest and eat the entire Twilight Forest. But I'm not convinced that the Twilight Forest is actually the place to do it. Because in this mod pack, every time I've been to the Twilight Forest, digging down, I never find diamonds. I never find anything useful. And I think 
that it's probably been modded out for this pack. I'm not sure. But either way, we're not going to be mining here because we are in a void world. So we'll be mining wherever we can. The nether is an option and it will be done for the uh, ancient debris or debris as it's actually called. But I always call it de debris. And uh, the, of course, the, the twilight forest will be eaten as well. There are more dimensions, including deep dark. And we'll get to those as we get to those. I had a problem here with if you leave torches lying on the floor, they will set fire to anything that is flammable. And, and of course, my entire base, if you can call it that, or floating island, currently is flammable. And that's what it was doing. It was burning away. And if we fall, it's over. So I'm holding back from that just to make sure there's nothing burning because it can burn underneath as well. Too much stuff at the minute to deal with. And of course, we lost some for that hole that was made. But I'm going to get this all into drawers as much as I can. And then we're going to have chests to just dump anything else, as it's called. Um, because if you put all of these singular items into drawers, not only is it unnecessary, it... Well, we'd need a lot more drawers. And it'd be a right mess. So what I usually do is have a nice, organised... And I'm doing air quotes. Organised chest to sorry draw system and then a chest or two that is semi-organized between just crap i don't want but i don't have a way of getting rid of it because we don't have a trash can yet um and stuff that i might need in the future i've built so stuff that if i build like 10 of something and i need to i'll put that in a chest so i can use it later and yes the trash can is the void but it's not the it's not always the simplest thing to do. And to be honest, me going backwards and forwards to the very edge to try and chuck things off, I will walk off. I, I usually do. So with this barrel already set up for the automated water process ish, as long as I don't run out of water, I can turn dust into clay nice and easily. Now you can turn the blocks into the clay uh, blobs. The, the game calls them both clay, it's really annoying. Um, but the clay balls that you require. And you just saw me use the void there as trash can. Now, you can put them down and smash them up. You get four. You can put them in a crafting table or in your own crafting bench and you get four. It makes no difference. You don't lose it. It's no more efficient or less efficient. Uh, but putting them down on the floor like I just did is actually less efficient because it's just time wasted. Just put them in your inventory and go from there. Now, of course, with this simple bouncing bonsai dongle pot, we have plenty of wood, plenty of sticks, uh, apples as food, which we turn into apple sauce still. And that's working nicely for us, but I would like to get a few more of them up and running and probably try and automate the outputs. Whether we can get the leaves into a hopper to turn into either dirt or water. And the saplings and the apples. Because we're going to have too many apples at this rate. I mean, you can see already, uh, I've got plenty of apples, stacks of... Apple juice is still apples for days. Now, there is the candy, hard candy as well, but I refuse to use that because when you level it up, which I did, and then it becomes the hardened candy, it damages you every time you eat it. And although it's only a, a heart or two, sorry, a heart, a HP or two, so like half heart or full heart, it still damages your armor, right? And that's a durability thing that we don't want to just throw away for food when we can eat apples or apple juice. And it, not only is it better, it doesn't actually cause any damage. Speaking of armor, we need to get the first level of armor table so that we can start making it. Of course, the first level is leather. And from there, you have to go through many, 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 many versions up until the end, high end stuff at the end. Go, going through pretty much every resource in the game. It's quite fun, though it is a little bit monotonous. Uh, with this being a hardcore, I only have to do it once, right? Because if I die at any point, it's gone anyway. Along with the actual, some of the uh, enchantments that I always get in hardcore, which are things like Soulbound, which are totally useless because I'm not going to keep my items when I die because the world gets deleted. But we're only on day 19, we're doing well, we've got our armor coming in now, and what I have noticed is I have set fire to the base twice now. Um, by dropping torches and I'm already producing a lot of stone as you've seen and previously I already set a lot to be cooked so cobblestone into stone 
Then, when we've got stone, you can turn that into the smooth stone tiles, as I've used over there, you can see where the lava is dealt with. So, actually, including that pit, that area, I've set fire to the base four times now, because twice there, and then twice by dropping torches. So, soon, very soon, likely in this episode, or near the end of this episode, uh, you're going to see a cut while I rip out all of these wood platforms and replace them for smooth stone. That way I know that it's not going to burn a hole randomly and I'm going to fall through it and that would end the series, but also it would trigger me a lot if I, if I die to something as ridiculous as walking through a hole that's been burnt in my floor. We do have plenty of wood, but now we have the cobble generator, we also have plenty of stone. So making the base more secure and fireproof is definitely the way to go. Though you can do it with wood as well, though it looks awful, but I'm not sure who knows or who doesn't know. Uh, crafting tables are fireproof, so you could just build your whole base out of crafting tables, if you wish. Though that would hurt the eyes, I think. A semi-automation thing now using hoppers. So in the top you put the items, as you can see, they're automatically pushed into the barrel by the hopper. And then when that gets to 100%, you've got a completed item in there of dirt. The hopper then below that takes that dirt out, puts it in the chest below, and then the top is redone again. So two hoppers make an automation here, nice and simple, there you can see, and then immediately replaces, and there is your dirt. Automating the best you can. Hoppers are great for this, and they're pretty cheap. Before we get into proper automations later on, of course, I will be using them all, because I don't like to do things manually if I can help it, and that is including killing bosses. I like to automate their demise as well, especially the wither, because no one wants to listen to the wither noises, right? No one does at all. But I think for now, as I'm looking to make the chest draw controller, which is reasonably cheap, diamond, redstone, bit of stone, four more chests, just to put across that barrier there where I've got the crafting table to the mob farm that will connect all of those together in theory but i think first let me take a bit of time and replace this floor i'm gonna need more than that let's go and welcome back and here we are not much has changed just the floor uh the shape changed ever slightly i've got no idea what my end goal is so you'll have to bear with me with the shapes or patterns that i may do though i would like to end or certainly the main process be done with a pattern that sort of goes around the chunks or the chunks on the minimap you can see there we're way off it at the minute but i'm sure i can figure something out and then also making sure to use the chunks to our benefit because chunk loading is important and very often I build outside of chunks and have to load two or three or four chunks to load one tiny little item. So following the chunks and using those to central the base, I'm hoping will work. You can see there I filled in the corners because the draw controller that I built while I was doing it um, wasn't connecting to those. And I've done that now. And then using the key, nice and easy, using the key on the draw controller locks them all or unlocks them all, but I like to keep them locked so nothing gets put in that I don't want. And there you can see the shape on the, on the bit of a circular on the out, on the sides and then square at top bottom. And I'm working to fill in this with dirty, but it's taking some time. Everything does at the start, but eventually it will start to go crazy. Now, as I go on, to make sure I can work through the night without being ransacked by something or someone or a creeper blowing me off my own platform, um, there is an issue with the mob farm. It's not spawning as much as I'd hoped. What I'm actually seeing is when I go into... I keep trying to say survival. This is all survival. When I go into the server to create a, to open it up to land so I can go AFK while I let things happen... Of course, I build myself in a little capsule as well. I'm not an idiot. But yeah, um, as that happens, it seems that they don't spawn. It only seems to spawn when I'm in single player. So I need to remember that when I want to obviously do all of this, that I make sure that I, ha I am in, this, in, the, in the correct um, setting. 
And of course, if you open a LAN server, you have to restart the entire game to get back to single player, which is very time consuming for anybody that's played modern Minecraft, especially one with as many mods as this. You appreciate how long it takes to load the pack up. So the last thing you want to do is close it and reopen it again. Now, I am aware that the actual size of the spawnable area in that mob farm is tiny. And maybe I should have over-egged it a bit better. There are fans that you can use to bring them closer to you. And they are pretty cheap with a bit of redstone, stone. Um, they are quite cheap. And a lever, I believe it is. <clears throat> so that might be something I have to do in the future. And as we come to close this episode, I managed to get some seeds from sifting the dirt. Um, the jungle seeds are good for getting the vines, plenty of leaves and a lot of wood easily. Just by putting down four saplings, you get these giant trees, of course. Um, vein mining them works sometimes, but not all the time. And if it doesn't, you then get left with the right mess. But on this instance, as you saw, it worked quite nicely. Now, getting all of this and getting some of the... Organic matter, as you've seen there, stacked up so we can run it through our automation and turn it into dirt to try and fill this entire area in so I can start and look at doing some farming. Now, make sure to use shears on leaves if you want the leaves, and we, of course, do. Anything else will result in nothing, or if you use a crook, you can get saplings and, and the worms, of course. But I think for now what we're going to do is end the episode as we are at time and then we'll come back when we've made a bit more progress in setting up the base for farming or something of the like. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like it, comments, welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Goodbye.